actually microbes do not have certain proteins which we have. Many of our cells have special protein on their surfaces and these proteins which are, which are present on the cell surfaces, any complement, activated complement factor come near, they just cut it and destroy it. Is that right? Should I tell you those products which are protecting us? Okay, do, do you know that RBCs, WBCs and platelets are derived from a single cell, pluripotent stem cell? There is a pluripotent stem cell in the bone marrow from where RBCs, WBCs and platelets are derived. Let's suppose this is a pluripotent stem cell. It has a nucleus. In the nucleus, there is a special protein, gene, sorry, there is a special gene. This gene produces the product. And this product is, yes, this product is producing a protein and this protein is anchored in the cell membrane. This is cell membrane, is that right? And this protein which is anchored in the cell membrane, is that right? Now, on this blue protein, this which is providing a base, what is this thing? This is a complement cutter. This is another protein which is anchored on that. And in the future, this system will be inherited by RBCs. WBCs and platelets. So all of them will have such cell membrane protein. At the top of this, there are complement inactivating proteins present. So that when RBCs are passing through some very dangerous area of inflamed area and complement are trying to attack, RBCs keep on neutralizing the complement and pass happily through them. Are you clear? One of this protein which inhibit the complement system is called decay accelerating factor. It accelerates the decay of, breakdown of C3 convertase and C5 convertase. And other name for the same thing is CD59. Similar protein, similar functions are done by CD59. Similar functions are done by another protein, CD55. So there are many different type of proteins which are present on the cell membranes, which are acting as complement cutters, so that when complement try to destroy our own cells, our cells know how to protect them. These are the dogs to bite others. If they come to us, we shoot them. Is that clear? No problem? Now, again, why I'm telling you? Because there's a very important disease in which the system is disturbed. There's no fun in learning the basic if you don't know the clinical related with that. Am I right or wrong? In the end, you are going to be doctor. So doctor should know the clinical diseases and these days modern doctors should know the clinical diseases in relation to molecular bases. So there is a disease in which, look at it, we'll start from here. This is mutant. This gene is called PIGA gene. I will not go into detail. Phosphatidyl, inocytol, glycan A protein. This gene produces a protein which produces an enzyme. That enzyme produces these anchor proteins. Is that right? Actually, if this is a mutant, if this gene is mutant, can you produce these anchor proteins? And if you cannot produce the anchor proteins, can they properly anchor? No. So cells will not have enough defenses. You get me? There's a disease, this is acquired disease, that there's a mutation occurs in some pluripotent stem cells in the bone marrow, and due to that mutation, right, the proteins which provide the anchor space for the decay accelerating factor and other complement inhibiting proteins, for them, this base is not there. Let me repeat, it's worth repeating that there is a disease, of course I will ask you the name of disease, but first you listen, there is a disease in which there is acquired mutation, it is not inherited disease, it is acquired disease. So due to mutation, right, we are unable to produce those proteins which act as anchors for complement inhibiting proteins like anchors for decay accelerating factors are not there, anchors for CD59 and CD55 are not there. 
So can such RBCs, WBCs and platelets protect themselves from against the hostile complement? No. So what happens to these patients? Look, in these patients, especially at night, RBCs are unable to protect against the complement. Maybe one factor is that at night breathing is less, carbon dioxide is retained, and in acidic environment, complement are more activated anyway. What happens that these patients have RBCs, WBCs, and platelets which are more vulnerable to the attack of complement. So they tend to develop what? They tend to develop hemolysis. Right? These patients develop number one. Hemolysis, RBCs break down inappropriate. And this hemolysis occurs within the blood. RBCs break down within the blood. They develop intravascular hemolysis. And these patients, when in the morning urine, they find hemoglobin. You know, RBCs have hemoglobin. You, know, you must be knowing that. And when RBCs break down, hemoglobin come out. And hemoglobin molecules, the small molecules, they can leak through glomeruli and appear into urine. So, if I'm having this disease, RBCs will break down in my circulation and from broken RBCs what will release? Uh, hemoglobin and hemoglobin will go into urine and I will have hemoglobin urea. What problem I will have? Yes please. Hemoglobin urea. Especially in the morning. Right, due to because urine is concentrated. Number one. Number two. With this, there may be also that is less traumatic. There is damage to the neutrophils, so more infections, and there is inappropriate damage to the platelets. So they tend to develop venous thrombosis. Is that right? Now, they have given the name of this condition. Yes, can you tell me the name? Thank God I did not offer any dollar. Thank God I did not offer any dollar. All of you know the name. That is paroxysmal, dismal, nocturnal, hemoglobin, urea. Right? The name of condition is paroxysmal, nocturnal, hemoglobin, urea. Now let me tell you the things. Paroxysmal is a misnomer. It should not be called paroxysmal because usually majority of the patient have chronic hemolysis, not episodic. Is that right? Nocturnal is also misnomer because they develop hemolysis in the daytime also, not only during the night. But usually because in the morning urine is concentrated, so hemoglobin urea is more visible in the morning. Urine is brown. But even the daytime urine you check, hemoglobin is there in these patients. Hemoglobin urea is also misnomer. Because not only they have hemoglobin urea and hemolysis, not only they have damage of the only RBCs, they have damage in platelets and white blood cells. Right. So, you have to remember one thing. Paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea is a misnomer. Usually condition is not paroxysmal in majority of the patient. Usually condition is not nocturnal in most of the patient. And usually it is not limited to only hemoglobin urea, but there is damage to the neutrophils and platelets as well. Right, but anyway, when they discovered this disease initially, right, they were able to appreciate these things more than other dysfunctions, so they put the name paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea. So now you know what is the pathogenesis of paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea? You want me to repeat or it's enough? Okay. You can rewind the video if you want to repeat. Right. So we can say decay accelerating factor was also one of the regulator of activity of complement system because until it is there it inhibits the complement attack on our own tissue. Is that right? Because decay accelerating factors especially keep on destabilizing C3 convertase as well as destabilizing the C5 convertase so it does not allow the formation of NF C5 B6789 that is membrane attack complex and protect our tissue against it. Any question here? There is no question. Let us have a break. Now we will discuss few more clinical points related with the complement system.